Welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast. This is Will Baggett, Chief Development Officer at Emergent Executives, serving rising leaders in college athletics and beyond. Is your personal brand a reflection of your leadership potential? We'll look no further than our Executive Image Workshop, which has helped thousands master the art of professional presence, and we can do the same for your staff and student athletes. For more information, visit us on the web at www.execimage.org. Greetings, this is Ty Brown, and welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast, where we highlight executive and organizational leadership. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at 1Q Leadership. Our guest today is Kurt Pyers. Kurt is the president of CAP Sports Group. Greetings, Kurt. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Ty. I'm happy to be here. Well, I'm happy to have you on, uh, Kurt. I I wanted to get you on here because of your experience, right? CAP Sports Group, you, you created in 2004. And what it is, is a sport and entertainment media consulting business, which handles distribution and acquisition of programming content. And you have a number of clients, Conference USA, Southern Conference, the Western Athletic Conference, America East, among others. You've worked with some independent schools. Before creating Cap Sports Group, you spent 15 years with ESPN and you have roughly 36 years in the sports industry in a variety of positions. So I, I wanted to bring you on to talk about some of the things that are happening right now and that could potentially happen here in college athletics. Doomsday, right? Now, I may be wrong about this, but but doomsday in college athletics is if the football season is canceled, right? That's almost like a great equalizer across divisions in college athletics because of the revenue that football brings. Thinking about sports media and programming, you know, lately with this coronavirus chapter in our world, we've seen how part of the industry is struggling to provide content. How do you think things will play out if the football season is canceled? Well, Ty, I, I think first uh, and foremost, I, I think that we will see um, college football played uh, this coming fall in 2020. Or, uh, But I, I do think that um, we are in an industry that all parts have to plan for the unexpected or for other, you know, situations, which would mean that there would be no uh, college football this fall. If that were the case, and certainly we, we, we are, we're not thinking it is going to be the case, but if that were the case, I think it would have major impact, right, on all the the wheels of that, uh, all the spokes on that wheel. and. Uh, Colleges and universities, as well as media companies, would be in for a very difficult uh, third and fourth quarter financially, um, and the longer term effects more so on college and university campuses than necessarily on the media uh, campuses uh, because of their other businesses that a lot of these media companies are involved in. We would look certainly towards seeing how that impact would, would affect uh, those, uh, those schools and to see that in how would they uh, balance their revenue and expenses uh, through this very difficult time would, would be something that we would all have to take a look at. And of course, when you talk about college athletics in terms of Division One FBS, from my limited knowledge, I would say revenue streams are money coming over from campus. You have sponsorships. You have donors. Obviously, you have attendance revenue from your live events, and you have revenue from media rights agreements. And when you talk about big time, Power Five media revenue is a big part of what they, you know, you can create your budget and you you can think years out or even leverage facilities knowing that you're getting a certain amount of money over a couple of years. That's a, probably hard to wrap your mind around if you're an athletic director or, or if you are the media company in terms of how things could play out. I mean, Does that kind of thing get worked into a contract? I mean, I would probably call on a consultant such as yourself to advise me in terms of that part of the, if I'm a conference or something like that, right? Yeah. Well, you know, we live in this age now where um, when you talk about the power fives, we have uh, four out of the five that have their own television networks. Um, Some are more established than others. Um, And then the fifth one, meaning the big 12 has, done an, an agreement with ESPN to basically create their own 
network via uh, the new ESPN Plus platform. So those conferences certainly are working in a situation where they have a revenue stream coming through for their own networks. But by the same token, you know, the majority of a lot of their rights fees comes from their live games that they sublicense to um, networks such as ESPN or, or CBS or Fox. And the, that revenue certainly will be uh, something that may be paused uh, based upon their agreements with those entities if they were not able to deliver live games to those networks. But as we see through the revenue streams that these uh, institutions are having and conferences are having, they're really working a year behind. And so revenue that, that they're seeing maybe for 2018 at this point in time, so there's still going to be revenue coming in um, and dispersed uh, for, for events that uh, took place in the past year. And then you, but at some point there will be a void, right? And, and so planning for that now is very important um, if this were to play out. Um, and, and obviously you lose your ticket revenue and you will also lose sponsorship revenue from, from the stadiums and donors will be, you know, uh, an area that you will be looking towards to help you fill voids, but that those numbers may not match up. Correct. And then the institution's hierarchy, um, on campus will have to take a look at how to subsidize or figure out ways to work with their athletic departments through this process um, so that they stay afloat. Obviously, there has been many, many surveys where athletic programs um, have varying levels of how they're doing financially. Some are making a profit, but that's a very small group. And then there's many who are breaking even or losing money, depending upon uh, you know, their formulas that they use on those campuses. So I think that all hands will be on deck at every institution and in every, every conference office to figure out ways to minimize uh, the financial uh, outlook for these universities. And we hope it doesn't get to this. And we certainly hope that there's ways to uh, work with all the smart minds they have on those campuses to to figure out how to get through this stage, no different than any other major business in America who's also looking at these types of uh, shortfalls, uh, perhaps in certainly in second quarter of this year, but also in third and fourth quarter, depending upon you know where they're at business-wise. Uh, are they at full strength? Are they at half strength or what have you? So there will be a lot of factors going into working uh, on these college campuses uh, in athletics to to really figure out um, where they're going to be uh, a year from now or or in or in the next six months or so. Right. And I, I imagine without seeing, looking at books, I mean, a lot of college campuses are already stretched because they already support athletics, right? Up to 50 and 60 and 70 percent of an athletic budget is made by like student fees or, or however money comes from campus over to athletics. And I imagine the people who are making donations to campuses are probably going to be a little tighter after, you know, the next few months also. So it just seems like when you talk about the, the industry, the sports industry, something like football season being canceled is, is kind of like a, a doomsday type situation. But more specifically, in terms of media and media negotiations, is everything on hold because obviously who knows what the outcome is and if you need to renegotiate something if you know what I mean like do you say okay well let's hold on and see how where all the chips lie before we pick up where we want to go with the future um I, I don't think I don't think you're going to see a pause in media negotiations right because contracts that are uh, in place now are going to have end dates right now with many of those agreements come stipulations to look at writing out a contract for additional years, but also to do a full negotiation, renegotiation, uh, or, or extension. And I do believe that there are certain contracts that are coming up here in the next couple of years um, with the PAC-12 and the SEC uh, as well. And, and I, I do believe that those agreements 
the American Conference uh, will will probably be, which I've already started uh, discussions, will probably stay on course um, and probably looking at elements whereby if there were not live events in, you know, uh, fiscal, I mean, in uh, calendar year 2021 uh, in college football, you know, how do we factor in the best scenario to extend those rights to include in the new co- uh, contract whereby all parties are made whole uh, if they were to miss X number of games in 2020, um, that uh, they'll that those games are made whole during the course of the agreement, which now agreements are stand, uh, could be as long as 10 years. I do think that there will be ways that people will look to um, negotiate in such a way that as best possible scenario for the, both the media companies as well as the colleges and universities. Right. You've seen, I think there are a couple uh, professional leagues are working or currently working on or have done at work deals. And I, I think you're going to find some creative people um, looking at ways to make up for their losses, right? So it could be people have looked at all kinds of scenarios of creating new content um, or more exclusive content or content for new platforms for these media companies. So I do think that a creative mind, when it comes to negotiating tables, will look to um, do deals or extend deals in such ways that all parties are, are, are feeling comfortable with what they agree to once those uh, contracts get signed. So I, I, I do think that we, with this bump, certainly a one of the worst ones we've ever seen in our country, uh, in our uh, obviously in our lifetimes, hit us at, at this time. I do think moving forward, um, there'll be ways to work with all parties to to make people whole and do the best they can to come out of this whenever we can have games under whatever conditions there are nationally through the government or the states for these colleges and universities. There's a new normal, it seems like, right? I mean, you, you don't have, want to have the same setup. You want to actually now have in for some type of major. I imagine there ha- there were in contracts there were stoppage, you know, things. Right. You know, but well, I, I imagine, right, exactly. But I imagine you want to have something in it about about something like this because now there's there's probably a new right. And so um, whenever situations like this do occur, it does lend towards lawyers on all parties looking to protect their interests for their most valuable assets. And so media companies, as well as colleges and universities and athletics, will look to, to make sure that they're covered in the scenario that may, uh, may develop during the next contract cycle. And that's not uncommon. I think that professional sports would be looking to do the same. Um, uh, and, and, and college sports will follow suit. And uh, as these contracts are negotiated and signed in the next 12, 18 months, I think there'll be at language added so that there is protection. You know, work stoppage in pro sports has always been there um, and the way that uh, leagues and teams get compensated during those work stoppages um, has always been there from media companies. So I think now colleges and universities probably will follow suit uh, and make sure that uh, there is some major protection for their major assets, which is college football and to to a lesser extent, uh, college basketball. Right. I, I imagine the individual campuses in terms of these type of conversations are probably leaning hard on the conference offices because that's who, for the most part, makes the deal with these. Exactly. No, no question. And, and I and, you know, there I say what these college you know, um, conferences are there for is no different than what the league offices are in the major uh, professional sports to to make sure that all their athletic directors understand, you know, where they're at with their current agreements and then where they're where they're heading with their next agreements and how can they band together as a conference to create opportunities and assets for um, their next negotiation, which uh, you'll see that across the board um, with folks and also which is no different than what these colleges and universities will be banding together to do so, not only on their asset, which is their 
own network, but also for the rights that they sell to other uh, media companies. Right. Well, Kurt, this has been an excellent conversation. Let's both you and I hope that we don't go down the path and be optimistic that college football will definitely happen in 2020. I totally agree. And uh, perhaps it'll um, look differently than may have been in 2019. But uh, and hopefully um, 2020 will be a season that people can band behind uh, for for all the re- right reasons and have a successful football season. Right. Excellent. Well, I definitely appreciate you joining us here on the One Question Leadership Podcast. All right. Thank you, Ty. That was Kurt Pyers. He's a president of Cap Sports Group. And of course, this is Ty Brown with One Question. And keep in mind, the role of a leader is to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And as always, be better tomorrow than you are today. This episode of the One Question Leadership Podcast is produced by Spades Media Group, solving problems using creative leadership.